go ahead and state your name and your profession here at Southeastern, will you please? I'm Melissa Archer. I am Associate Professor of Biblical Studies, and I'm also the Chair of the School of Divinity. All right. So, can you tell us a little bit of the story that brought you to working at Southeastern? Yeah, I came here in 2011, actually with my husband, Dr. Ken Archer, who teaches theology here, and uh, came from Lee University in Tennessee, where I was teaching, um, but the opportunity opened up for both my husband and I to, to have positions here, and so we made we made the transition. Awesome. All righty. So... I know you briefly touched on this before the interview started, but at about what age did you become an official believer in Christ? I became a believer in Christ when I was about five years old, and I remember it very distinctly. It was on a Sunday night. My dad was a pastor, and I remember him just giving kind of you know an altar call for people to come up, and if you've never invited the Lord you know, Jesus to, to, to be in your life, to be Lord of your life, you can make that decision. And I didn't go to the altar, but I just remember doing that in my seat, just saying that. And then I told them on the way home, I was like, you know, I asked Jesus to, you know, be in my, be in my heart tonight. Um, I distinctly remember that moment, um, as, as kind of that time that I decided, yeah, this is, this is what I want. And, and I think initially it was, it was because I trusted my dad and my dad was opening up this opportunity to the congregation. And if it was important, it was something I, I wanted to do. Awesome. All righty. Um, so again, you touched on this before the interview started. Um, so how did you come to know Christ? I think you kind of answered that one in that question. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think I had a real, now my mom would probably differ on this, but I don't think I had a real cognizant idea of being a, a sinner necessarily. Now my mom would say, yes, I definitely was <laughs> as a child. <laughs> but I, again, it was that idea of, of just kind of accepting that invitation. I loved Jesus because I had grown up in church, but, but this idea that I needed to make a commitment to the, to the Lord. That was a new concept for me. And so because my dad said this was something I should do, I, I did. And growing in that understanding afterwards, like understanding what that truly meant, you know, came, came later. But it was just that, that sense of, of, of trust. Um, not only trusting in Jesus, but kind of trusting in my father, who was my pastor, as far as you know, kind of leading leading me in that in that path. All right. Um. So, even though you were very young when you did ask Christ into your heart, what what would you have to say your lifestyle was before that? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, just being being a child, I, I can't say that I could really categorize. I, I can't remember. You know, kind of a whole lot of specific things um, uh, about that, but. I guess what I would want to focus on is then maybe maybe after. So even though that was an experience I had at a very young age, um, it led to other experiences. So I, I accepted the Lord at, at age five. Um, I experienced water baptism at about age seven because, again, it was kind of, okay, here's this now next step that I take to show what's happened to me inside uh, and so that was a very significant moment. And um, since we're in a Pentecostal institution, uh, I can say I experienced spirit baptism as a child. So all of all of these kind of experiences that I had built on that initial profession of of faith in in Jesus. So so why I can't maybe describe my life beforehand, I can certainly see how that event changed me, and I then moved forward in you know these experiences and deepening of my uh, of my faith and that doesn't mean I didn't have struggles and you know experience rebelliousness as a teenager and things like that because because I did but um but yeah that understanding of who Jesus is to me has been since I was young so i mean i guess again you kind of described number 6 on how your life changed after believing in uh, Jesus. So since you did grow up in the church and have been a Christian since a very young age, um, 
What was your life like growing up with your faith? Well, um, my faith was important to me, and growing up in a pastor's home is a unique mm-hmm. experience. So, you know, the church was such a large part of part of my life. So that so that was significant. I mean, I um, you know was very involved in all the activities of church and things like um, what used to be called missionettes. I think it's Girls Club now in the Assemblies of God. Those were formational for me because that's where I was really studying scripture and, you know, kind of being discipled and, and traditioned. And so those those became very important to me. Um, and I grew up in kind of a small town. My dad was was known in in the town. So, you know, everybody kind of knew me as the, as the preacher's daughter. Uh, and that was that was tough because. I often wanted to fit in and didn't feel like I fit in because of that. Um, and so I, I did I did struggle with that uh, from time to time, kind of feeling different. Um, people wouldn't invite me to parties because I was the pastor's daughter, which now I'm super thankful for. I, I really am. So, you know, I, I kind of look back at it. And it's what I'll often say to people who have grown up in church. Um, just because you didn't experience maybe a life of kind of doing all these all these things we sometimes think about people coming out of out of these lifestyles what your testimony is and what i feel my testimony is is to god's preserving power right like i didn't have to experience all of those things um and i'm grateful really grateful to the lord that that's not my testimony um, that that God saved me from from those things, and so I think that's I think that's a powerful thing as well. I mean, testimonies of of, of people coming out of a you know a, a lifestyle of you know drugs and alcohol and destructive habits that's a powerful testimony. Also, I don't think it's any less powerful than people to say, "No, I I've I've, I've walked with with God," um, because sometimes we think that's not possible, but. It, it is, and that's what we're called to as Christians. Whether we're teenagers or, you know, full-blown adults, we're called to walk in that life that Christ calls us to. Awesome. Um, so, after that, what would you say some major turning points in your faith that provided more strength to it would be? Um, well, I mean, some of those things that I've mentioned, some of the experiences I had, uh, the church itself, um, being discipled in, in all of that. Um, but also, and this, this might felt, sound really strange, um, my educational pursuits in doing what I'm doing now. Um, I love studying the scripture. I love reading commentaries about the scripture. Um, I, I just find this, this deep connection with God through that. And so, uh, you know, for me, that just is very, very fulfilling and helps me grow closer in, in, in my walk with, with Christ. And I think it's why I love doing what I do, because I get that opportunity to hopefully, um, you know, transmit that passion and that that uh, you know, love for Scripture and love for God um, to, to my students in a way that it becomes infectious and they want to do it too. Well, with Chris, you've definitely done that. <laughs> So, what were some of your hardships that you had to wrestle with as a believer, especially being one for so long? Uh, yeah, and I, I think I think sometimes we can get too comfortable with God, um, and I think that's always a that's always a danger. I mean, we are called to this intimate relationship with God, and and and, and God, you know, desires that for us. But yet, God is God. <laughs> And I think sometimes there's a there can be the temptation to, to kind of blur to blur that. The other the, the other issue that that I have sometimes because I do what I do because I teach you know Bible and have classes where that's what we're studying is I can allow that to substitute for my own personal devotions. Like, oh, I don't need to spend time reading the scriptures because I'm going to be teaching it today. But what I discover is that I get dry spiritually. Um, and I need that. I, I think the significance of those practices, prayer, um, spending time in God's presence, reading scripture, um, I, I have to have that. I can't substitute that with other things. But it is, it's a challenge. It, it, it really is. And I think, you know, the busyness of life can often 
um, say, I don't have time for that today, or oh, I'll do it, you know, later. I'll just read it on the Bible app. Um, you know, and it's great we have those things, but but spending time with the Lord, um, you know, I think is is um, our our biggest challenge as as believers today. So, what has convinced you that Jesus is Christ and that Christianity as a religion is true? Yeah, that question, I've, I've, I've thought about that as I read the questions through. And, um, you know, in some sense, it is, I, I trust the scriptures. I believe the scriptures to be true. Um, I, I know what has taken place in, in, in my own life. Um, and there are some elements that it's just a matter of, uh, of faith. Um, I, I think, though, also seeing the transformation that takes place in the lives of people who choose to make a decision to follow Christ, um, to see what happens in their life says to me, something's going on here, right? Something, something beyond what we can manufacture it as humans. And so, for, you know, for me, that is part of that, that, that proof, you know, that um, this thing's real. Um, this, this thing we call Christianity is, is really about the way of, the way of Jesus and, and, and following Christ. So I, I think I think those become important. Watching my kids, right? I mean, all, all of that become um, reminders to me that yeah, this 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 is it. This is this is the way of life that Jesus calls us to walk in. Awesome. So almost done. If there are any miracles that uh, you've witnessed firsthand or even through someone else, um, and you'd like to share it. Um, I've seen some in terms of being growing up in church again, and my husband and I also were pastors. Um, we had a lady in our church who was um, healed of cancer. And that was awesome. I've seen people die of cancer, you know, um, but but a definite, documented, you know, cancer was there, and then cancer's not there, you know. So so that was God. Um, a person that needed a kidney transplant after our church had a had a time of, of prayer and, and fasting, round-the-clock fasting, um, was able to get a kidney transplant. I see that as, you know, as a miracle of God. Um, instances of, of personal healing in, in, in my own life, not massive things, but, but small things that um, I know was God touching me. So, yeah, I believe in the miraculous. I believe God still works in, in those ways. And, um, you know, we, we hear about them. And, um, you know, sometimes we don't see as many as we want. We read scriptures and say, man, why don't we see all of this? But, um, you know, I do believe God is still working in miraculous ways. And what is one thing that you'd like to encourage all believers with? I'd like to encourage all believers um, with just remembering that they represent Christ to the world. What does it mean to live as Christ disciples, to follow Christ's teachings? I'm reading the Sermon on the Mount again right now and how challenging that is and what, what it is that, that Christ calls us to, to, you know, to be concerned about others, to, to love. That love is that thing that, that drives us. And um, it's the love that Christ has. It's not just this you know, feeling that, that, that can come and go. It's the love that only Christ can produce in us that we have for others. And what does it mean to live as citizens of the kingdom? What does it mean that that, that heaven is our ultimate home? Um, that the kingdom of God is what we should be praying for. You know, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I think that's what we're called to do. We can get so caught up in what's happening in this world that we forget that we're called to bring, to be, to be you know, those that represent what the kingdom of God is all about. So people who are working for justice, people that side with the, those that are oppressed and marginalized, I think those are the things that, that God calls us to um, more, more than anything. So if Jesus says, they'll know you are my disciples by your love one for another, what does it say when we have all this kind of bickering and, and fighting that goes on even in the body of Christ? And so if we can be the people that God has called us to be, I think the world is going to take notice and understand what it means to say God is love. Uh, and that would be what I want to tell unbelievers. God loves you. Christ loves you. 
I love you. But that love has to be enacted just like Jesus did. And I think if we can do that, I think our witness becomes more effective. Awesome. Thank you. And you wrapped it up perfectly right there, right into the last question. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Archer. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.